The Grand Canyon holds immense significance as both a national and global landmark. Often referred to as the basement of history, it serves as a remarkable representation of geological history, with each rock layer tracing back to a distinct period since the formation of Earth. The canyon has also been the site of numerous peculiar and enigmatic findings. From ancient artifacts and fossils, to rare animal species, the Grand Canyon has presented many unusual and inexplicable phenomena. Recently a team of experts conducted some research on the Grand Canyon. This research led to a terrifying discovery that could reshape our understanding of this historical marvel and its impact on the broader narrative of world history. Join us today as we explore the terrifying new discovery in the Grand Canyon. Before we start, don't forget to click on that subscribe button as it's the best way to help us grow as a channel. Did you know that scientists have detected some prehistoric life forms in the Grand Canyon? This discovery started with a boulder that had fallen off a cliff. Geologist Alan Prill made an intriguing observation during a hiking expedition with his students along the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon. As they ventured along the trail, Krill's attention was caught by an unusual rock. This boulder, which had fallen onto the side of the trail, displayed distinct marks resembling footprints. Later, when the photos of this boulder were examined, it turned out that Krill's discoveries were ancient fossilized footprints. Analysis suggested that the prints could have been about 313 million years old making the fossil track the oldest vertebrate footprint ever found in the Grand Canyon. This ancient footprint is believed to have belonged to an amniote, a hard-shelled egg-laying animal. Scientists saw two sets of tracks visible on the boulder surface. It could be of two different reptilian animals crossing diagonally over the spot. It was also noted that one of the animals was about a foot long and used a lateral sequence walk. A lateral sequence walk is where an animal moves the left rear foot first, then the left front, followed by the right rear and then the right front. But scientists are still determining if the tracks came from two separate reptilian animals or the same animal on different occasions. Whichever it might be, this finding carries profound significance as it documents the use of lateral sequence walks very early in the history of vertebrate animals. This discovery also serves as the earliest known evidence of amniotes, indicating their existence in sand dune habitats, predating other evidence by at least 8 million years. This find is particularly praised because the boulder had been in plain sight and many people didn't notice it. Scientists believe these footprints were well preserved because of sand that had covered the boulder for millions of years. The Grand Canyon as we know it holds a lot of caves in it with the insides filled with several remains of plants and animals, providing a valuable glimpse into the region's past. These caves have been the perfect habitat for bats, birds, rats, and now extinct mountain goats and sloths. The bones of some of these animals were found and their bone-dry conditions created a wonderfully preserved environment. The well-preserved fossils allowed researchers access to 40,000 past years of history to know what the world was like during the Ice Age. During the exploration of the caves, scientists made a fascinating discovery, the presence of numerous scattered dung balls strewn across the cave floor. At first glance, one might assume that these droppings were recent, but upon closer examination, it was determined that they were actually remnants left behind by a 500-pound Chester ground sloth, a species that had become extinct over 10,000 years ago. By subjecting the dung to radiocarbon dating analysis, researchers established that the sloth dung deposits were approximately 40,000 to 11,000 years old. Old matter detected in the dung also helped scientists to figure out the animal's eating habits. Pollen which drifted across the air was ingested by the animals. It also holds key hints about the regional plant community. There are also several skulls discovered, skulls of mountain goats that have gone extinct and even mummified condor birds. Analysis showed the Grand Canyon condors were likely feasting on megafauna as a delicacy. 
The unfortunate extinction of the megafauna species potentially posed a threat to the survival of these magnificent birds as well. Apart from these discoveries of animal life, the sedimentary rocks exposed throughout the canyon are rich with marine fossils such as crinoids, brachiopods, and sponges with several layers containing terrestrial fossils such as leaf and dragonfly wing impressions and footprints of scorpions, centipedes, and reptiles. Yet, in contrary to these findings, the Grand Canyon being a prehistoric place has very strangely not produced any discoveries of dinosaur bones so far. The reason for the lack of dinosaur fossils can be attributed to the geological time period of the rock layers. The Grand Canyon's rock formations are primarily from the Paleozoic and Mesozoic eras that predate and coincide with the age of dinosaurs. So the rocks of the canyon are older than the oldest known dinosaurs, so chances of finding dinosaur bones are quite slim. At the same time, the rock layers have undergone substantial erosion and geological activity, making the preservation of dinosaur fossils even more improbable. An anomaly of the Grand Canyon noticed by geologists is that it is missing over a billion years worth of rocks. For numerous decades, scientists have been deeply concerned by a phenomenon which serves as a testament to the passage of history through its rock formations. This intriguing anomaly, widely known as the Great Unconformity, was initially identified by geologist John Wesley Powell in 1869. Over the years, subsequent geologists confirmed this peculiar occurrence when they discovered that certain rocks, dating back 1.4 to 1.8 billion years ago, were mixed with rocks that were a mere 520 million years old. This implies a perplexing gap in geological history. It is believed that various parts of the canyon have undergone transformative processes over the course of millennia, further adding to the complexity of its geologic narrative. In a bid to find out the exact reason for the Great Unconformity, a group of scientists resorted to a process known as thermochronology, in which chemical analytic techniques are used to measure the heat stored in a rock when it was formed. The outcome obtained from this research data suggests that some events might have caused the strange gap in the geological record. The event was believed to have happened alongside the harsh breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia, which occurred roughly 633 to 750 million years ago. This period must have been a tumultuous time for Earth's tectonics as it affected rock layers and left them unbalanced. Also, the samples analyzed by the team showed that the eastern half of the canyon has experienced different geologic deformations compared to the western half. In the western half, the rocks seem to have risen to the surface about 700 million years ago, but in the eastern half the same layers of stone are buried under several kilometers of sediment. While this study alone may not provide a definitive resolution to the enigma of the Great Unconformity, the team is confident that it represents a significant stride forward in unraveling the mystery. On April 5, 1909, a front-page story in the Arizona Gazette reported on an archaeological expedition in the heart of the Grand Canyon, funded by the Smithsonian Institute, which had resulted in the discovery of Egyptian artifacts. The original story goes that the team found an underground network of tunnels high above the Colorado River. There, they discovered a massive cave containing remnants of an Egyptian civilization. Perched 2,000 feet above the Colorado River, the chambers of this underground citadel were littered with artifacts, hieroglyphics, and even mummified remains, possibly of Egyptian descent. A discovery such as this is incredible, but the truth is, the story of this discovery is a hoax. Still, the Smithsonian Institute has not been able to produce any valid records about this finding. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, yellow journalism was widespread. The controversial style of newspaper reporting presented hyperbolic sensationalized stories, often as a way to gain readers and boost circulation. Scientists agree that someone needed something eye-catching to print, and a local mischief maker may have spun an old story into some sort of local lore to attract readers, and that's how the story about the discovery of ancient Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon came to be. 
One of the most intriguing stories you will hear about the Grand Canyon is of the Mogollon Monster. Also known as Arizona's Bigfoot, the Mogollon Monster is a beast that has been reported to be seen around the Grand Canyon area. The earliest documented encounter with this mysterious being dates back to 1903 when I.W. Stevens made a report to the Arizona Republican newspaper. Stevens recounted a startling experience when he came face to face with an unfamiliar creature. Describing it as the Wild Man of the Rocks, he depicted the creature as having white hair on its head and a long flowing white beard that extended down to its knees. Stevens stumbled upon the creature while it was crouched over a recently slain cougar, devouring the carcass. Despite his efforts to remain silent, the creature somehow sensed his presence. It turned, locking eyes with Stevens, and emitted an incredibly chilling screech, sending shivers down his spine. Further descriptions added that the creature's upper arms are big as they hang down to its knees, and it has huge feet with tracks measuring about 22 inches long. A notable characteristic of this creature is its remarkably pungent body odor. Witnesses have described the scent emitted by the creature as a combination of rotting fish, skunk, and foul body odor. Some campers have also reported that the monster would invade their camp during the night and make a mess of things. Several theories have come up about the Mogollon monster saying it's a local Sasquatch, but some suggest that it was a large grizzly bear that was seen standing on two legs. It still hasn't been confirmed to this day. Let us know in the comments section below what you think about the new discoveries in the Grand Canyon. Thanks for watching. See you soon with another video.